Hello everyone, my name is Beth. My name's Elena. And we are here to talk about the classic children's literature. It's my book club. Hold on. Classic children's literature book club book picks for the month of May. We chose two because it was middle grade May and those two books were Alice in Wonderland and Treasure Island. So which one do you want to talk about first, Alice in Wonderland or Treasure Island? Treasure Island. Okay. So Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, it is about Jim, who ends up going on a big adventure. Uh, so we have Jim Hawkins, and then we have a pirate called the Captain, whose name is Billy Bones. We've got Dr. Livesey, Squire Trelawney. Uh, those are two of Jim's, like, adult friends who go with him on the adventure. Then we have uh, Long John Silver, Captain Smollett, Ben Gunn, who they meet on Treasure Island, and then Sailors, so Arrow, Israel Hands, Red Ruth, Hunter, Joyce, Gray, and then Pirates, Black Dog, and Pew. And then there are a few others, but those are the main characters. Um... And this is, like I said, by Robert Louis Stevenson, who is from Edinburgh, Scotland. He was born in 1850, um, and he was a very sickly young man. So instead of becoming an engineer like the rest of his family, he became a writer and a traveler. Um, married an American woman who already had a son, and he wrote this book for his stepson. So what were your thoughts on Treasure Island? radio for you. So it was a little bit harder for me to follow. Um, it did. It had it. everything in it. Like it was a full audio book, but it was the, it had all the different characters as a radio. And I was not used recording. to it. So I, after a little bit of time, I was able to figure out like the, who was talking, what there were different voices and stuff like that. Better than that, amazing book. Um, I really liked Jim. He was very funny in a way. He was he was very sassy. Yes. More sassy than Jim. Which is saying something. A lot. Um I also liked Black Dog, who was not one of the main characters, who was just a strange visitor. Um we don't see a lot of him though. But um, when his friends like set off, him and his friends, set, when Jim and his friends set off to find Treasure Island, it sounded like it took several months and like hours to do yes, so. Yes, several but, months because they was, were on a ship. Yeah, but it was um, a very fun, exciting adventure when the copter is right. The coffee's fine. I spilled some. Continue. Um, and so it was very exciting because, because um, they like set off and then you just get to see like, well not see, listen to like kind of what happened on the trip, um, what happened when they finally got there, once they find the treasure and stuff. Very exciting. What are your thoughts about it? Um, I really enjoyed it. I think that it's a great adventure book. Um, I actually learned in one of my PhD courses about like the boys adventure books. Uh, and then oh. it, when I was in, hello dog, when I was in Mississippi for the uh, Fabie Kegler Awards and Conference, um, there was a, one of the presenters who spoke about like adventure books and so I thought it was really uh, apropos that we had Treasure Island after I learned about it so um, boys adventure or adventure books but specifically boys adventure books were popular in the 19th century um, so late 19th century early 20th century books like Treasure Island were really really popular and the reason that they were popular is because they uh, thought that uh, writing books like this would help children learn about the world around them. Uh, so these ideas like 
philosophy and knowledge of what it takes to like go on trips like this um, and deal with people. They really thought that books like Treasure Island were going to enlighten children, um, specifically boys. And so like Treasure Island was one of the books that they thought would help teach empathy to boys as they grew up and were going on their um, adventures. So, um, and I've always liked Treasure Island, but again, it was one of those adventure books that was pointed more at boys because, you know, girls didn't go on adventures. Girls didn't do things like that. Uh, so it's all, the only female character in the entire book is Jim's mother and we only get her at the beginning because, you know, pirates. It's, it's got to be all men. But no, there's a bunch of female pirates. Yeah. All right. Now, now, I got to have the book, please. Now let's talk about Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So we only read the first one. We did not read through the looking glass. This one has the original illustrations by Tenniel, um, which is why we're using this copy. Love these illustrations. Um, so this, eh, uh, this by Lewis Carroll was, his name was uh, Charles Ludwig Do Dodgson. I don't know why I have so much trouble with his name. Um, and he was a math professor um, and wrote this book and many, he really enjoyed the way words work together and nonsense words kind of connected those with mathematic principles, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it worked really well for him the way that he put together uh, his nonsense poems. And so he wrote Alice in Wonderland for the three, um, three sisters who were his boss's daughters. Alice Liddell uh, was the middle sister, and then there were two others who I cannot remember their names. And this little page right here does not um, does not tell them to me. Uh, anyway. They went on a picnic, like they rode the boat down the river, went on a picnic and asked him to tell them a story. And when he told them the story, Alice was like, I want you to write this down for me. So he wrote the story down, brought the completed story to the kids and then gave a copy of the manuscript to a friend of his to read because um, he was talking to him about you know, how the girls had asked him to tell this story. And that friend then gave the manuscript to a publisher friend of his. And that's how Alice in Wonderland actually came to be. So what did you think about Alice's Adventures in Wonderland? Overall, amazing. I loved the characters. There was a kind of spooky part that I can't really explain. Um, but I liked how it said she cried a river of tears and really explained how much she cried in the beginning right. when she fell down and how they emphasized that she was eating mushrooms to turn big and small. Yeah. Um, there is a really good music part at the beginning for me, which is how she got down the rabbit hole. It had to be a really big rabbit hole, right? Yes. It like, had to be, like, extraordinarily the, big. The rabbit holes in our yard are, like, this big. So, yeah. we like, really big. Th this had to be a human-sized rabbit, which is creepy when you start to think about it. Um, I said this before when I was talking about these being the books for Middle Grade May. Um, I taught... Alice in Wonderland to my sophomores this year because the overall theme of both Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass is growing up and not wanting to grow up and then growing up to the point where you understand that you don't have to be like this perfect adult grown up, right? You can still enjoy fairy tales. In fact, the, um, I don't know if it's actually his, um, note or if it is just something that he um, included and then somebody got a hold of it. But there's a quote that says, uh, for Alice, one day, for, for the day that you will be old enough to enjoy fairy tales again. Um, so there's that part when you're growing up where you think you can't enjoy fairy tales and things because it's like baby stuff. 
then you get older and obviously I'm 39 and getting a PhD in children's literature and I love it. And a big focus of that has been like fables, fairy tales. My final paper for my Shakespeare class was about the folklore and fairy tales that Shakespeare used in his, um, in his plays. So you hit a point where you figure out that, you know, it's fine. And so I taught this to my sophomores and we watched, you can find it on YouTube. I mentioned it before, but we watched the 1909, I think it is, um, silent film and they have the adult sized rabbit in one of those like early 20th century costumes and it's terrifying. I had 15, 16 year olds coming in and being like, I had a nightmare last night. Can we not watch a clip today, please? <laughs> Can we just read? Um, but you know, this, and when you just watch the movies, you miss out on a lot of characters and things that he has in here because there's a lot of nonsense. And so they turned it into a children's story when in fact, it's all about growing up. So is this one younger children's middle grade, young adult for everybody? I would say definitely a thing for everybody to read. I would say if you have younger readers reading it, definitely there are some parts that might need a little bit more adult supervision. Like, <laughs> supervision. But overall, it's for everybody, young readers. The four-year-old did actually listen to audios for both of these with us and told us we were stupid a couple of times. So I don't think she was quite ready for either of these. And the Cheshire cat, she said, creeped her out. So, but Chessie which, is very adorable, isn't it? Well, Sometimes. he's also super creepy. So there is yeah. that. Um, so this one, upper middle grade to young adult, but definitely rated E for everyone. What about Treasure Island? Is oh, Treasure this? Island, I would say mm, I think it's definitely for everybody. Yeah, middle grade. So, uh, middle grade, I know I've said it a thousand times, but middle grade is grades, or ages 8 through 12, typically. I say 7 to 13, 14, um, because young adult is like 16 and up, right? And there's lower young adult, but really, this is more of an upper middle grade. Uh, so, we didn't have those age distinctions back when these books were written, right? So it would have just been either a children's or an adult book. And this would have been marketed as, or was marketed up until like the 1960s and 70s as a boy's adventure novel, just like Tom Sawyer, Tom and Huck, Huckleberry Finn. Um, and then this one was a girl's adventure novel, um, a girl's nonsense, like cozy reading fantasy novel. Um, but they would have both been marketed to ages about 9 to 12, 13. Because above that, you're working at this point. Above that, you would have been either working or finishing up school and, you know, helping at the house. Uh, but that is what we have to say. We rated this. What do you rate Alice in Wonderland? Uh, out of five, I would say about probably like a three and a half. Okay. Out of ten, about a five and a half. No, we, and we're half. only going out of five. So out of five stars, you give it about a three and a half. Yes. That's about what I give it now. Used to, it was like four and a half, five stars. Uh, I read it three times during middle grade May. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done with the nonsense. What about Treasure Island? Out of five, what out do you rate five. it? Mm, probably a four. Four and a half. I give it about a four. All right. Let us know if you read these. Um, ever. You didn't have to read them in May if you didn't read them with us, but if you've ever read these, let us know what you think about them. What are your favorite parts? If you haven't read them, let us know if you want to read them now, and we will talk to you again soon. We're off to read June's book, which is Little Princess. So we'll come to talk to you guys about that sometime in July, and until then, I hope you stay safe out there. Bye! Bye.